In this following video, I'd like to share with you what I consider the important principles and the technique of enlarging a small capsular excess. I often wonder what it is that results in a smaller excess. I realize there are two main reasons why this occurs. One, when you're attempting to control your excess, especially in an intermittent cataract, with the fear of it extending into the periphery, we often end up with a smaller excess. And the second is perhaps in a patient of a posterior polar cataract, when we intentionally tend to plan a small rexus with a view of the possibility of the need for a sulcus fixation of the IOL. I'd like to demonstrate this in this patient with an intermittent soft cataract who underwent phacoemulsification with the direct chop technique. Let's now watch this video. We start with the incisions followed by the staining of the anterior capsule adequately with blue dye and performing the capsular excess. Please note that there is always a tendency of these rexes to run away into the periphery and therefore we as surgeons tend to make them slightly smaller with a view of giving us that little added control. Here you can see I'm performing a spiral rexes and with care and caution I'm able to complete the capsular rexis satisfactorily. The resultant rexis is fairly circular, well centered and about 4.5 mm in size. I now move to the nucleus emulsification with the direct chop technique. When working with a small rexis, we need to be mindful that we do not accidentally damage the capsular rexis edge during the direct chop procedure. The way in which you do so is one, you make sure you stain your capsule very well so that the capsular rexis edge is always visible to you during surgery. And second, all the instrumentation during the direct chop procedure should occur within the central zone that is within the capsular rexis itself. In this case, as you can see, the cataract is a soft, mature cataract. The nucleus breaks down fairly easily into its emulsifiable fragments. The power required is not more than about 30%. The flow rate is about 30 to 36 cc per minute and the vacuum of 280 to 300 is adequate to perform the nucleus management in this case. One needs to be extremely cautious while bringing the fragments up and emulsifying them in the pupillary zone because even at that point there can be an accidental damage to the capsular excess edge. Please note how during the nucleus disassembly and emulsification, my instruments, that is the tip of the phaco probe, as well as the chopper, always tends to remain within the center of the eye itself, thereby protecting the capsular excess edge from accidental injury by the phaco probe or the chopper itself. So, in a patient with a smaller capsular excess, a bimanual irrigation aspiration system of removal of the cortex I believe is preferable because of the ease of gaining access to the peripheral cortical tissue. Upon the completion of the irrigation aspiration, I now proceed to introduction of the single piece monofocal IOL in the capsular bag. Sometimes this itself can be a struggle because negotiating a big lens, especially a slightly more rigid one, through a tiny capsular excess edge can have its own challenges. In order to facilitate the ease of injection of the IOL within the capsular bag, it is imperative that at all times and in all cases, we have a capsular bag that is well insufflated with viscoelastic. Following the IOL insertion, we now visualize what does the capsular excess look like. And clearly you can see that you have a suboptimally sized rexus. We now consider enlarging it. Now the points to take into consideration prior to enlargement of the lens are as follows. Making a nick in the anterior capsule while the nucleus is still in the bag or over an IOL are extremely different experiences. In the former case, we tear the anterior capsule, taking the support of the underlying nucleus. When you're looking at tearing the rexus over a IOL, there is no such support. There is often a gap between the anterior capsule and the IOL. This is because of the overall thinness of the IOL. 
and this lack of support can make the creation of the initial nick sometimes rather challenging. The second important point is to ensure that your side port incision is large enough to allow for the free movement of the intraocular forceps within the eye. Please ensure that when you are going to go and hold on to the capsular excess edge prior to tearing it, you are working with a good illumination, high magnification and a perfect focus on the anterior capsule. The stromal hydration of the neighboring side ports or the main incision can sometimes hamper your visualization of this step, so ensure all the above criteria are met. The next thing we need to consider is what should be the direction of the initial nick made by the capsular dome into the rex's edge prior to enlarging it. So let's assume that at around 6 o'clock position is where you are planning to start making the initial cut. Now, what if you made the cut at right angles to the tangent at that point? So this is the tangent at that point. This is at right angles to it. Now, if you were to make a tear at right angles to it, here's what would happen. Imagine if you then raise the flap. I believe that the resultant tear that you would get would be way too large and perhaps even larger than what you could desire and sometimes even maybe larger than the edge of the optic itself. Now, on the other hand, if we were to consider making a cut at more of an acute angle, say something like this. Now when we raise the flap and started to make the tear, we would have definitely a tinier tear which we can then control to enlarge as much as we want to get it to the desired size. Therefore, I believe Rather than making a tear which is at right angles, making a tear at an angle like this gives you a more controlled opening which you can then enlarge based on what you so desire. Therefore, I prefer to make an oblique tear into the anterior capsule so that when I then pick up this stone edge, I can control the sizing of my rexes to give me something just as large as I desire. So what I'm doing here now is I've got to the proposed point of where I want to initiate the tear. I'm holding it firmly with the capsular excess forceps and I'm initiating the tear by pulling on the capsule. Having initiated the tear, I fold it upon itself and in a manner similar to propagating your rexes, I enlarge the tear to the pre-desired size. Now the other edge of the tear is similarly held with the help of the forceps and the tear enlarged to give you a larger rexus. At the end of the enlargement, you've got now a rexus which is much larger and of an optimal size. A quick point I'd like you to note is that I have enlarged the capsular rexus under irrigation. You could very well choose to do this under viscoelastic as well. We now proceed to performing the visco wash where all the viscoelastic from within the anterior chamber and behind the IOL is carefully and completely removed. And finally, the hydration for the wounds brings us to the end of this case. Thank you.